Now, let's solve the same question, the mod three accumulator question with JK, JK flip flops this time. Let's design it with the uh, JK flip flops. So we will rely on this excitation table in this manner. This is the characteristic table of JK flip flops. And it has several operations here, no change, set, reset, and no change operations. That's it. So what you have here is, uh, I mean, if you want to go from zero to zero, you either have to have it as no change or uh, clear operation, right? No change or reset operation. So both of this, when you focus on this one, it means that you need to have zero X here. Four, going from zero to one requires a setting operation or a complement operation. So when you focus on both of them, it means that you need to have one X. That's why you have one X here. That's it. So what else? If you want to go from one to zero here, you need to have either reset operation or complement operation, right? When you focus on both of these, it means that you need to have X one. Oh, that's why you have X one here. So, if you want to go from one to one, one to one means that you need to have either set operation or no change operation. No change operation or set operation, when you focus on both of these, means that you need to have X zero for no change, right? That's it. So let's use this, let's use this excitation table for designing with J flip-flops it's pretty straightforward so uh, you have your state diagram again the same question okay the same question and you again have your the same state table but for JK a uh, input equations you need to rely on this uh, excitation uh, properties right here okay um, that, that, that's what we'll be dealing with so for this purpose let me rewrite this state table again so that it would be a bit larger one so what you have here will be your again current states y1 y0 0 0 1 1 1 0 this time you will have again your next states but this time they should be uh, j k j1 k1 k0 k0 1 1 0 k0 j1 k1 0 k0 K1, K1, J0, K0, and finally you will have your Z1 and Z0 as outputs right here. Okay, this is for your next state, and these are for your X1 and X0 inputs. Namely, uh, for what? For 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and Oops, one one and one zero inputs right here. Okay, you will have your uh, necessary input equations here. Okay, when you're trying to when you're trying to go from zero to zero, zero to zero, and uh, what uh, you need to have here should be going from 0 to 0 is 0 x right 0 x 0 x 0 x going from 0 to 0 is 0 x going from 0 to 1 is going from 0 to 1 is what 1 x okay 1 x going from uh, x is x I mean we don't care about x x x x 
and for this one going from 0 to 1 is we already know it right 1x and going from 0 to 0 is again 0x all right this is how we fill it and your that ones are the same because they're they're more machine and let me, let's just copy them 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 1 1 and 1 0 you see they are just corresponding state values right here okay and for the remaining parts going from 0 to 0 1 to 1 0 to 0 1 to 1 0 to 0 is 0 x 1 to 1 is what x 0 x 0 x zero and going from uh, um, uh, zero to uh, again let's focus zero to one one to zero zero to one is one x one to zero is x one one x x one x x one and these are x x x x and let's just put them as x x x x so that we won't bother them okay and finally the last one zero to zero one to zero zero to zero is zero x right and one to zero is x one one okay going from okay this one is again x x x x x, x x x x x x x wonderful and the last row is what we got one to one zero to zero one to one is x zero x zero and zero to zero is zero x zero x right here all right so the last one. one to zero zero to zero one to zero is x one x one and 0 to 0 is uh, 0x 0x and going from again 1 to 0 0 to 1 1 to 0 is x1 x1 and going from 0 to 1 is 1x 1x all right that's pretty all right so you have for j1 k1 j1 k1 j1 k1 j1 k1 and you have for j0 k0 j0 k0 j0 k0 j0 k0 all right then i need to have a k map for j1 need to have uh, K map for J zero, J zero. I need to have a K map for J zero. I need to have a K map for. Uh, oops, uh, let me write here K zero. I need to have a map for um, uh, J j1 and i need to have a k map for k1 j i'm sorry j1 <laughs> i'm just uh, just going crazy now k1 and j0 k0 okay okay now it's much better now let's do this for y1 y0 x1 x0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 so you have here and k1 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 0 and for j0 0 0 0 1 1 1 1 0 one one zero and for k zero 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 one 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 zero you have them like this okay these are y one y zero x one x zero y one y zero x one x zero 
have here again y1 y0 x1 x0 okay so good so let's just copy them like this this for corresponding locations okay for j1 i'm focusing on all of these okay i'm copying these rows that's it zero zero x x x i'm doing it as fast as i can zero one x x zero one x x and for this one it is x x x x j one x x x x x and for the last one it is one zero x x one zero x x and okay for k1 here now i'm focusing on the second rows here the second columns here x x x zero x x x zero and then x x x one x x x one and then x x x x x x x and then for one zero it is x x x one x x x one all right for j zero now which is x x x x x x x x okay let me put them okay j j zero is this ones now uh zero x x zero zero x x zero and four uh, j zero it is one x x uh, zero one x x zero and for the last one which is zero this one is zero x x one zero x x one perfect and finally the k k is this k zero x zero x x x zero x x okay let me put these x's again they will be x's and again this one will be x one x x x one x x and uh, finally this one should be x1 xx again right x1 xx x1 xx pretty all right okay now let's try to draw the rectangles as large as possible this one this one if you see a better one please correct me oops this is this is way much larger and and this one is this one is uh, okay okay this one is large again so good it's good 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 what else i have this one and what else i have i have i have this one all right and what else i have i have this one and what else i have i have uh, this one i guess right so good now let's write them for j1 that should be let me write this one first which is uh y0 y0 x0 plus this one is uh, it's uh y0 not and uh x0 great for k1 it should be let me write this one first x0 plus let me write this one now x1 all right and then for j0 j0 it should be let me write this one first y1 not and x0 plus and let me focus on this one first this one later y1 and x1 okay finally k0 which is i focus on this one now it is uh x1 no 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 it is x0 plus this one is what x1 okay now i have my output equations 
I'm sorry, next state input equations and your output equations are, are pretty, pretty straightforward because your output straight equations are z1 equals y1 and z0 equals y0. So these are your output equations and these are your flip-flop input equations and this is the answer to your question are you design with jk flip-flops this is how you approach the problem so uh, when you want to uh, design this circuit at the laboratory or with a computer-aided design tool this is what you will have you will have two jk flip-flops like this right here and they have different combinational inputs I'm skipping that there can be some common parts here uh, that you can have multiple level optimization here but basically that's the idea and then you provide the clock signal the sorry clock signal here and pack this up as a uh, I mean circuit in the end you will have the same design with uh, your so this is the idea by doing the same design using different uh, flip-flop technologies namely D flip-flops T flip-flops and uh, JK flip-flops and how to use them I mean there are some rule of thumbs here that uh, you can take into consideration I mean Usually, JK solutions, JK flip-flops, often require the fewest gates to implement. You can count the uh, uh, gate cost, if you like, for different uh, questions by designing using JK flip-flops. And T flip-flops are usually the natural choice for counters, for example. Uh, because when you're designing counters, they really require less cost in combinational uh, part for uh, next state input equations and these flip-flops are usually very popular in computer-aided design tools for example the espresso algorithm that we didn't discuss in detail in the uh, uh, in the combinational uh, design part is favoring uh, the flip-flops and its solutions because the flip-flops are really used pervasively in very large-scale integrated design technologies usually they're also very popular because it's uh, uh, data uh, data flip-flops so okay anyway uh, at the end of the day you need to be uh, I mean, adept at using all of these three, three flip-flop types where required or depending on your liking. You, you, you need to be flexible using them. That's the idea. And when you, of course, uh, finish your design, uh, I mean, finish your designs, you, you need to test them uh, using a computer-aided design tool or you can go ahead and use manual techniques for verification of your design as well so this is all about designing with d t and jk flip-flops okay thank you for uh, listening